And here we are. Here we have it. I'm excited about it. I see a room full of amazing people, and I know it's going down. Let me let y'all know what we're getting into, man. Everybody's talking about this and this and that on their podcast, but nobody's really getting into the things that we talk about. Nobody's getting into that shop talk. Nobody's really shooting it straight and telling it like it is. And that's why the great folks up here at Double XL have decided to give you the great hip hop debates. Now we're gonna talk about some real touchy stuff. We're gonna talk about some stuff that people talk about, and we're gonna we're gonna cut it close, shoot it real, and give it to you straight. And uh, for this uh, inaugural edition or this inaugural uh, first one we have here, we got a really great room full of people, man. Of course, with me right here is Vanessa Satin, EIC of Double XL. What up, V? What's up? What's up? kind of exciting to do we've been wanting to do a project with Trevick for a minute so um and talk about some cool topics so I think great hip hop debates would be something interesting and kind of like those cafeteria conversations you know? for sure for sure I don't know if they talk about it so much in the hair salon but it's definitely a lot of barbershop <laughs> talk um it two, depends which hair salon right right not the ones I go to <laughs> so to my right to you guys' left we got I mean this guy's been involved with so many amazing projects and journalism from the MTV side of things to you know you see him in the studio right now running around with Buster and the whole conglomerate mm. the world renowned my man Shaheen Reed what up Shah? what's up I'm happy to be here XXL and mom too, you know. No doubt, no doubt. It's he got his OG fan. hoodie on because he's definitely OG status. Yeah, for a long time. <laughs> yeah. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. In the center, the lady in the cipher today, man. We got Samaya K. Anytime you want to know about somebody's fabulous life, or if you want to get a review, or you want to know what's going on with some dope music and some dope things in the culture, she's definitely on point. What up? And she wrote our upcoming cover story. Oh, word? Yeah. Yes. Crazy. Lost my cover virginity with double XL, yeah. so look forward to what, that. What better way to lose your virginity than to something with double XL, huh? Touche. <clears throat> and of course, man, we got Brooklyn's own The Finisher. I'm talking about from Big Daddy Kane to B.I.G. to smashing every club in this city to tearing up that radio, man. The great Mr. C. What up, C? What's good? What's good? Chilling, it's good man. to be a part of the first, uh, the first ever podcast for double xr yeah, really appreciate y'all inviting thing, me man. you 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 definitely are the first you break you know what i mean you break grounds you break records and now you helping us break this podcast definitely glad to be here so the topic for today is i mean with the life of pablo being out there right now i think we had a few weeks to to digest it and receive it we definitely did we want to talk about the best kanye west albums yeah so Kanye is, I believe, seven or eight albums in. Seven albums and then one with Jay. So that's eight in total. We're going to talk about the worst Kanye album, too? We're going to talk about we're, the worst Kanye oh, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We, oh, yeah. We, we're going to talk about everything. All that's right, what we're cool, here cool. for. So, um, like I said, Pablo is out there right now. I'm sure that all you guys... And that's are, the final album title. We know it's definitely Pablo he's talking about. It's, it's, it's the, not Paul. Well, it's been released, yeah. <laughs> yeah the yeah, life of Pablo. For a minute, he was going to be Paul. I wasn't sure. You know, the life of Paul. Paul McCartney? No, I think he was Paul... Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle. That guy definitely toes the line with that Jesus talk, huh? <laughs> I was going to say, are we talking about the, the fantasy albums, too, that never came out? The albums with him and T-Pain and the albums with him and Drake, just the fantasy albums? Because I have those okay. pretty high up well, on my list. What do you think about Pablo? <clears throat> I thought Pablo had great... I thought it was great sonically. Um, I love the melodies on it. Um, lyrically... It wasn't as provocative as some of his past projects, you know. Uh, like he's talking about the model and the bleaching of the booty hole, and he'll feel like a jerk <laughs> if the if the bleach, the bleach gets, on, gets his on his t-shirt. That was weird. Yeah, it's a real weird line. Especially coming from Australia Beans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After that, the order was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I don't think Kanye can make a bad album. I don't think he can make a whack album. I think. You know, if you compare this to a lot of the stuff that's out now, I think it's it's superior. But when you put it in his catalog, in my opinion, it ranks pretty low in his catalog. I hold, I hold Kanye to such a high standard. I'm actually the first one, you could do the research, that ever interviewed Kanye. And um, ever since then, ever since he told me we had a big argument because I, I told him his first album was definitely going to go platinum. And he said that he was gonna go diamond, and I was bugging. <laughs> this is a college dropout. We had a we had a little argument over that, but um, I think he holds himself to a higher standard. I I think Pablo is is good, not great, and definitely not one of his best albums. I also think the story about Pablo is bigger than the album, right? It was like a circus, like just yeah, leading up. Project, yeah. yeah, I mean the rollout was 
just as you said before, like, what was it called? It was Swish and then Waves and So Help Me God and then Paul. I mean, and now it is the life of Pablo. But even just the way it was rolled out, I mean, we're how many weeks deep and it's not streaming on every service. Right. So as is it fans, a you, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a disaster. I mean, it's one of those things like a Kanye album is an event to me, not mm-hmm. just in hip hop, but in pop culture. And I remember watching Saturday Night Live and he says, go to my website right now it's coming out and I went to his website and I was ready to spend the $20 but I couldn't Stop hit there. you know I could but, <laughs> I I could, but the fact that I couldn't right. you know me and a lot of fans like he basically fueled like people bootlegging his shit and you know to me a Kanye album it's so convoluted it's come to a point that even the artist he kind of doesn't care about it anymore like he released it pulled it off the site that was also remastered like, it garden thing that felt like the whole point of everything was a merch get Absolutely. You know, like, it doesn't matter what the album was. It didn't matter what everyone thought. They were going to sell those $200, you know, robes or bathrobes or programs. Tattered or clothing. T-shirts yeah. or holes. That, that's what it, the event felt like. It was like, well, it doesn't even matter what this project is. Yeah. Like. It's that all these people kind of come out and co-signed him, you know, and did you buy a T-shirt? Well, and I think this album, the way I looked at it, it almost soundtracked his fashion show. And I think for a very long time, he's been very into fashion. Those are the tables he wants to sit at. He wants cosigns from Anna Wintour. Those are the tastemakers. Karl Lagerfeld. That's who he cares about, really, at the end of the day. And I don't think there's anything wrong. But I think as music fans, we got shortchanged. I mean, this was so, an album to soundtrack an Adidas fashion show. Do you feel like the music is suffering because of his? Absolutely. I think the music is, I think the fans are suffering, you know. I'm a Kanye fan, again, since 04. I didn't interview him, like Shaheem. I was still in college when College Dropout Shah, came you out. you have the answers, though, Shah. Yeah, you didn't but... didn't have the answers back then. But it's that, how, the as a fan, you know? <laughs> but as a fan, how can we look at it and embrace Life of Pablo when the artist himself is basically telling you, half you guys can't out. stream my record. Right. The record may come out, may not come out. Oh, and by the way, I'm already working on my next, next album. Right. So to me, as a rapper, you're not even focused on your own shit as fans or as media or as critics, how are we supposed to care and why? How do you feel about the actual music, though? I think the music is fine. I think to Shaw's point, there are some gems. Like, I really loved um, Waves. I really liked, you know, uh, Wolves. Frank Ocean was great on it. But, you know, to me, is he moving the needle? And I don't think so. And Kanye was always somebody, you know, even on records like Yeezus that I think were really polarizing, he pushed the needle. Like, he was doing auto-tune when it wasn't so cool for rappers to. He was being vulnerable when it wasn't so cool for rappers to. But what is he really saying this time around? And we're at a time when guys like Kendrick and J. Cole are saying things and moving the needle. So I think in the zeitgeist, I just don't feel Kanye is as iconic as he'd like to be, and I think he has the capacity to be. Definitely that he has the capacity Mm -hmm. to be. Absolutely. There was a tweet. It said, uh, said, Kendrick Lamar is what Kanye would have been if the Kardashians didn't get him. That was, uh, what's his <laughs> name? I saw that. Uh, that was, uh, the Tonight Show. What's the... Forget what it was. The new guys who took over the, the, um, the guys who took over John Stewart's spot. Trevor Noah. Oh, uh, Trevor Noah. He tweeted that, he was saying, and I, that, I, I don't think anything hit the head, the nail on the head like that. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, that, that, yeah. that, yeah, he did seem that like That definitely it, struck a chord. Yeah. I mean, and, we going back to George Bush doesn't care about black people, yeah. Kanye. Well, that's what you thought, and, I, I think that's what fans thought the direction he was going in that you couldn't hold him back he was going to say whatever he wanted but that it was more than just about clothing and him and what he talks about now I think on this Twitter feed totally and people expected more uh, you know Khaled said earlier this week that he considers himself the uh, you know Quincy Jones of hip hop I think in a lot of ways Kanye is that Quincy Jones of hip hop when you get people like Chance and you get people like The Dream and you get you know, Kirk, Franklin. Kirk Franklin <laughs> I think he brings something great out of people because I think people think he's going to rise to the occasion and the music's going to live up there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we got that on this project, but I still think that is the, you know, I mean, Quincy Jones played trumpet, Kanye raps and does his own little thing. I feel him as kind of that Quincy Jones that knows how to get people together and get the best out of them. I just don't know if we're getting the best out of him right. sure. now, and I don't know when we hit that wall. Um, but then when this project came out, everyone was like, well, you know, it's better than Yeezus. You know, but I don't believe, but the, I don't that, believe that, that. was the comparison, was yeah. to not compare right. it to one of the other albums, right. it was to compare it to Yeezus, which was you know, okay, so what are we saying? <laughs> I, I think Kanye will be best served to not even put release dates 
for albums. I think he just needs to drop it because it, it seemed like the release date kind of just pigeonholed him, and he wasn't quite sure and it wasn't quite finished. And you know, he was he was. We saw we saw a, a, a track listing, and then we saw a whole another track listing like right. in the next forty eight hours. And it was sharp, man. He was a little confused. It was definitely all over the place. Shaw, shaw, shaw. It's Mr. C right here. Break it down, C. <laughs> Let me He's tell y'all something. Head, Let me tell y'all something. Everything Kanye does, he knows exactly what he be doing. He knows everything that he does, he knows what he's doing. All that changing the track listing, all that changing the album title. He had the album already in the can, ready to go. All of that is a part of his stick, as part of his thing of to get to create the hype that he wanted to create. As far as the Life of Pablo album, I think it's a dope album. Um, I think the two downfalls of, of what happened with his album was one. Putting it on title, no offense to title, no offense to Hove, but you know uh, everybody couldn't get the access to the album like you would if you was to put it on iTunes or Google Play or whatever the case is. So that's one. And then from a DJ standpoint, especially with radio, he didn't service a clean album. Mm -hmm. You know, like Def Jam, you know, had to had service me the album clean by some DJ that just made up his own clean version of the it's album. Terrible. It's a terrible clean. And wow. and and so that that also played a role in it too. And and, wow. and 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 but I think the album is dope. I think one of the best I think one of the dopest tracks on the album is the I Love Kanye the little 44 second interlude yeah. because that's 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 synonymous of what Kanye is all about. Everybody always talk about they want the old Kanye or they want this Kanye or they want that Kanye. But Kanye is going to Kanye is going to be who he is. You know, whatever that is for the moment, he's going to be what he is. So, back to the original point, he everything that Kanye does, he knows exactly what he's doing. It's but just, the problem is it didn't work. I mean, yeah, that's the just question. So weird. Right but now. but yeah. it, it, but it didn't it but did, it didn't work in who whose eyes though? I mean, I mean, you know, it definitely didn't work. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, but but but, but, it, but, but it, 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 you know? I think I think what he. I think what he was trying to set. If, I think if he wanted it to be successful commercially, he would have put it out. Um, you know, like I said on iTunes or Google Play. I think the fact that he put it out on title was to 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 to, to help title boost up. Is is and I'm you sure know, he got a check. So right. For all we absolutely. Know, he absolutely. got a check bigger yeah, than has, absolutely. But basically, he has a title. That's one thing. Right. And, and but if you look at the dynamic of the album, it's to me, it's more like a mixtape than an album. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying because even like when rappers put out mixtapes, it's really and a, a street album, you know what I mean, or whatever right. the case is. So, but, but you can't. But, but you know, like a song like that? "No More Parties in L.A." That's a that song is bananas yeah, that to me. Rings off. I think that Kendrick's artist, voice is too low, and they didn't mix Kendrick right. Well, Kanye is still mixing the album. If that okay. makes you feel any better, he <laughs> said that it's the new mix and massive version going up this week. Okay, okay. I need that. I didn't like how Kendrick, Kendrick's voice wasn't. They're mixed. still tweaking it. Um, as far as as far as Kanye as as one of the the coach's biggest artist though you know does it hurt him that he doesn't have an album or his latest album isn't commercially successful you know they didn't, they didn't release the numbers to Absolutely. nelson and sound scan so we don't know what it's scanned we don't know what it's streamed you know um they said that titles um uh subscribers double to two million so i guess you can kind of gauge it that way that's a but success because a artist of his caliber though you know and you certain can't because that you have to you, you know at the end of by. the day they're definitely qualitative things, right? Like impact and what someone sort of like, you know, how hot they are. These are qualitative things. Mm -hmm. All four of us will have a different definition of who's hot right now. But numbers don't lie. And that's the one metric that that's how you compare people, right? I mean, like you said, Ye wanted to go diamond. Why was that important? Because he knew people like Big went diamond. He knew what the metric was. And to me, the fact that they wouldn't show the numbers, like title basically said we have the numbers we're not telling you i think everyone in this room kind of knows if the numbers were that popping we would know what they were but, but a guy like kanye can't have a number five record or a number 25 record if he's not number one it's best that he doesn't chart at all because he's a winner he's an icon and we really do expect like the best from him right. but i i think that um you know we're also in the age of music where Artists is just dropping albums just out of the blue, just like what Kendrick just did, you know, a, a week or two ago with the untitled, untitled unmastered yeah. album, just dropping it, even though he dropped it right after the, you know, his performance. But also, Kendrick has a number one album yeah, with that. No, I, I understand that, but the you point know? I'm making is that the point I'm making is that a lot of these artists are just strategically dropping albums in unique, different types of ways. Sure. To where, as I don't even, 
you know, because of the quick fix era that we in musically, like everybody wants to hear the new, sh- the new. I was gonna make curse. I don't know if I can curse on this podcast. Oh, we can. Oh, I uh, already have like oh, three oh, times. So go for it. Okay, yeah. everybody wants to hear the new shit, but then after they hear the new shit, they on to the next thing. Sure. Um, I think Kanye recognizes that, and that's why I think he put the album out the way that he put it out is because, even though he probably wants his projects to stand between the test of time, nowadays, uh. Certain nowadays projects not going to stand the test of time as it would five, 10, 15 years ago. So I, I just think, you know, just like the way he put this album out with Tidal and how Jay Z put the album, you know, I forgot the album he put out uh, with uh, with Samsung or whatever the case Man, is. It's like more, and, more artists is doing, you know, unique ways of releasing albums. And if the numbers, if the numbers come out big for them, it comes out big for them. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I think because we're in this quick fix, you know, it, musically, I think more and more artists are just trying to find different and unique ways to put out their music. And, and I respect that. I think the fact that a guy like Ye would use his music to soundtrack a fashion show that I'm sure he also got a very big check from, right. I think is very interesting and kind of speaks to him being a trendsetter. I think what's disconcerting is for someone who has that much exposure. So you're thinking not only his platform, but every single Kardashian and Jenner is tweeting out his record, right. Instagramming it, posting well, it selfies like- in the studio. And it's like you put all those numbers together and, you know, let's be honest, this album didn't make an indelible mark. I think, you know, even three weeks out, we've all, you know, we're talking about Kendrick's new record. We're talking about all these other things. And I just feel like, where's the imprint? Like, But but it goes back, I don't mean, I don't, but it goes back to what I said earlier. When he dropped the album, he seized the moment for that particular quick amount of time. And I think whatever he wanted to get out of it, he got out of it. And then, like I said, it's on to the next one. But I don't think he did, because to Torrey's point, why put out the Mastered version? And on Twitter, he keeps talking about the record, right. talking about support art, don't support, you know, streaming. Like, he's still kind of on his, you know, pedestal. He's talking about textbooks. He's talking about everything, <laughs> you know, teachers, everything. But I think, you know, a guy like Ye... I think he wants to win, and I think he wants us all to still be talking about his album. He loves the accolades. You know, this is a guy who's done the cover of Rolling Stone, cover of Vogue. He has this incredible tenure of success, and I think, you know, I think it's great that we can sort of like, oh, like he was strategic. I don't think it was. I think... A lot of shit happened. It kind of derailed, and he now like it's a sort of like me to me. I hear what you're saying. I would is say that it's he a circus, a moment, right. you know, when it lasted more than just one day, because now you can have your album come out, and how long does it really last? So I can see it going both ways. But part of it to me, I don't, as a hip hop fan, I don't come out um, being any more excited about Kanye West after the project. So I don't know if that made the connection or not. However, I don't know if I'm the fan. He's ultimately going after too you know well that's another question is anyone in this room the fan that he wants or has he moved on where he's like look i really don't care what music people think it is really about this world of fashion and art and design that he's so you know gung-ho about maybe he cares more about what he, you know the president cares. hermes thinks than what we think i don't know i think he still cares about the, the music listen at the at the heart of everything i mean i know kanye like music is sort of just a piece of Everything that encompasses Kanye now, but I think at his very foundation, his core, he's still an MC, he's still a producer, he's still a music head, and you know he wants that validation. He wants to be at the end of the day, be validated as the dopest or, or, the, or the hottest guy. But he's definitely changed in the sense that we used to have a Kanye who used to make uh, beats for people on their mm-hmm. albums. You know, I who used to might guest more. appear on somebody's project. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's you know you're working on Kanye's project or nothing. It's his movement, and you've got this guy who we know is talented and knows adds so much to the culture musically, um, you know, personality-wise, but we only get taste of the music when he has this moment. Like, I would love to be able to see him still work with artists and contribute as a producer and as somebody in the community, not just to be about the Kanye moment. You know, right. there's something about that that takes away from me. It's like, well, when did you decide you only made beats for Jay-Z and Beyonce? And then when did you decide, well, they're not even getting any more. It's only for yourself on your projects for when they come out. And I'm, I'm just conf- I'm confused. Of what and I'm OK is. with that. If Kanye says, look, I can't because, you know, for a while, who's supposed to be executive producing Rihanna's record right. and French Montana's record. Designers, I'm sure. Uh, there you go. And I think, you know, I don't even mind if he says, look, I'm my own person. I'm an icon. I can't focus on these other um, small fish, so to speak. But then say something that's 
important, say something that makes a lasting impression. I'm fine with that. If he's like, look, I'll only work with myself because <laughs> only I deserve Kanye beats. I think it's great. But then give us something that is moving the needle. That's all I ask, whether it be sonically, you, lyrically. Do you, do you feel like the collaborations and, and the, the way he goes about creating music now with so many different people coming out and having so much input, do you feel like that's taken away from Kanye's voice? I mean, perhaps. I think, you know, V made a good point about him being sort of this Quincy Jones figure. And he is. He's probably one of the only guys in rap, maybe with the exception of, like, Puff, that can get everyone in a room. Because you know when they come in the room, studio, they're going to yes. try to be as good as they can be for Absolutely. a Kanye song. Like, Chance says it on the song. Absolutely. Yeah. And killed it, by the way. Chance oh, had one of the it. best, he killed it. one of the best verses, one of the best guest appearances on, on this whole album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And decided. one of the best, like, appearances and verses for Chance's career period yeah. I mean yeah. this kid is on SNL it gave him just this like resurgence of interest and in a lot of people who you know kind of weren't sure what Chance right. the Rapper was doing so even never heard of but there was, a great, there was a great article in New York Magazine I think Rembert Brown wrote it and there was a couple weeks ago and he said he had a line where he said that you know look at Ultralight Beams Kanye's coming in sixth place in that song right that he's not starring on his own projects anymore Right. You know, or maybe you know, I'm paraphrasing it. He's not starring on that. But he didn't star on this project. I think that's an interesting kind of way to look right. at it. Is that you know, m- making him sixth place on Ultralight Beans was interesting to right. look at. You know, and then when you think of the performance and everything, so I wonder what role that plays. Is that you know, how much is he's looking at being the creator and the one that puts it all together and the visionary because you see so many guests. Sure. I think he still could salvage this album. I, I, I think. You know, once they figure out a record and just really put a concerted effort and go to radio with it, and he's definitely going to do a, a tour. I don't know if he's going to do a Pablo tour, but, you know, people going to come on and see it. I, I definitely think the album can still be salvaged, you know, do some videos Wait, for he, it. He, he, right. Do we even you, have a visual from the album? Is there, There's no uh, video, right? I don't think there's any videos, no, but, you know, he just announced that he's going to do three albums a year. Right. So he's going to be mean doing. He's over this album completely. I, I mean, yeah, that's I, what that means. right. I, I mean, I'm done with this I mean, if he's saying I'm doing three albums a year and, and he's getting ready to work on this uh, Turbo Graphic 16 album and getting ready to put that out <laughs> with, with another sure album and, and then another album after that. So, I hope so maybe he has, you know, maybe he has moved on from Pablo album and maybe he has come to the point of uh, oh, trying to uh, be more creative as. You know, some of you, 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 some of you, I've said on this um, podcast as far as uh, really showing um, who he really is as an artist. Maybe that, that, maybe him talking about doing two and three albums a year is him getting back into that true artistic flow of who he really is. Maybe right. we'll see. Well, and then there's that interesting question, you know, to Shaw's point, like how important is rapping for him? Maybe he is just this great, like, musical ear. He can bring people together. He brings the best out of you. That's what a good producer should be doing. I don't think this project was the best in order to right. reflect that. Right. Maybe that is where he's going. Maybe yeah. that's where he wants to be. But I don't know if this was the best reflection of saying, I'm going to make this great album. Sure, it's going to have me, not all of me, a lot of other people. I'm bringing the best out of everything, and I'm going to bring you something that's musically amazing. I think that's maybe the direction he wants to go. But I don't know if we saw it on this project. It seems a little bit hodgepodge. I mean, we went to the thing. He played the whole album, and then he played a whole bunch of songs that weren't on the album. Yo, that right? was like, so like, weird. What he we just do? passed the aux cord. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> like, okay I don't know. So yeah, you Doug, come on out. out. Right. <laughs> you know, um, Kanye West is obviously um, one one of the most iconic artists in, in this new generation. Um, and he's competing against himself in a lot of ways. You know, we look at an album like College Dropout, which was his first that we have here, did uh, 4 million, and then we got Late Registration and Graduation, which a lot of people say was his best work. Um, that between that and Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, 808 and Heartbreaks, Yeezus, and then we have Pablo again. What do you feel like, Sha? You said this is his worst album. How do the rest of you guys feel about well, where I, Phil's in? I have, I actually have Yeezus. Rank that's his, and it's 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 hard to say worse because I like I said I don't I don't think yeah he has he has it's like what's Leonardo DiCaprio's worst performance you know like he's 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 a gem you know he he's an important figure I definitely think Kanye is 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 found his way into like the all time greatest list but um when. I think it's, it's, I say lowest in the catalog. When when you say when you say worst, it kind of equates with being bad. And I don't think Kanye can make a bad album. I don't, I don't think that's in his DNA. But I have this uh, Life of Pablo. I have this coming in number six of his seven albums. Number six. 
with Yeezus being under that? Yes, I have Yeezus as number seven. I, I think Yeezus, I think Yeezus, I know a lot of people don't like Yeezus, but I, that's that's a tough album, man. I just think it just went so far over people's heads, especially, you know, it coming after my deep, my, the, the Deep Twisted <coughs> Fantasy album and after the Watch the Throne album. Um, even though technically that's a collaboration album, but coming after those albums with the Yeezus, I think that's what made people like really just be turned over with Ye- the Yeezus album. But I thought the Yeezus album was dope. I mean, I think the Pablo album is probably his worst album, but I don't think, you know, you know, between Pablo and 808s and Heartbreaks, those are probably the two least favorite albums for me. I love 808s. Nah, I can't stand that album. I love 808s. I can't. I see 808s is, is one that was that was highly debated when it came out too. Yeah, I can't you stand that You have to only listen to 808s when you're going through a breakup. So when you're going through a breakup, <laughs> well, right. I, I believe I, you, but, but go exactly. through a breakup and you will love 808s. I just can't I stand you. the auto tune for the whole album. I just can't. I can't. I cannot. I cannot. I mean, it was such a different. It was such moments. a different vibe, and and coming from Kanye, who wanted to be kind of looked at as one of the best rappers, you know, it was, right. it was a whole different feel for him. Um, and I feel like he, like you said earlier, he shifted the culture. He, he moved Absolutely. the needle. You know what I'm saying with that album? It made you talk about 808s now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about to, future, and it, and it, think about Drake. Right, and, and the time period, the time too. period, the yeah. stuff that was going on at that yeah. time. It was definitely perfect for that time period. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I will agree with you, Tori, that it was different. It was definitely perfect for the time period and the era that it came out. I just, from a creative standpoint, it didn't do nothing for me creatively because I, you know, it's like you you know why he did what he did. It's because of the era of the musical climate that was out at that time. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? That's but, just. Uh, I'm, but, but whereas I'm Jesus, sure you're DJ Jesus to me was just too. mad creative. Like right. just, yeah. it was just a creative. I mean. That's a dope album. Well, Jesus I, is a dope I, album I think me, a lot of people slept on Jesus. I think the overt kind of religious imagery put a lot of people off. Like, you know, once you start comparing yourself to Jesus, right. it can only go downhill. Um, I think we learned that from the Beatles. But, you know, I think it's this idea that Jesus sonically, he did some real interesting shit. Absolutely. Like stuff that other rap producers weren't doing, you know? And, I mean, even look at, you know, the Shoot, Strange Fruit roll, sample. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that I mean. Just... Rick was involved with that album, right? Rick Rubin? And, and he pulled, yeah. you know, Charlie Wilson. Like, he was doing kind of interesting things. There was a Bollywood sample. Like, he was really kind of going for it. And I think that Yeezus, I think it's way people ahead slept of his on time. it. I think Yeezus is Yeah, that'll I be one of those so albums that people come back to. Just like 808, though. 808 was very ahead And of My his Beautiful time. Dark Twisted Fantasy. I think when that came... You know, a lot of people didn't kind of give it the um, the accolades that it deserved, and it's definitely high in his really? discography. Really, I actually hear people say that. Nah, that's, I just, dis- I disagree. Yeah, I hear I people say that that's his Charlie, best. That, that between was, that and graduation, that was crazy. Best. Well, I think yeah. though that with that record, there wasn't sort of the big radio single. So, I mean, you look at the sales here, right? It's like doing a third of what some of his other records are doing. I think it was one of those like ardent Kanye heads, like we all fuck with it, but a lot of so-called kind of casual Kanye fans, they don't think of it in the same way as like college drop route or graduation, but sonically, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was dope. Like you, dope. you still listen to it now and it still holds Absolutely. up, you know? That it's was, a great record. That was one of them joints, that's, you know, that's where he, Introduced the Good Fridays joint, so absolutely he had us all right. tuned in crazy. Absolutely. And I, again, and just doing things to 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 change the climate and the culture and being an innovator, and and I feel like that's probably where people are looking for Kanye to go, and that's why certain things become underwhelming or, or become a disappointment, right? Because he's not making an event out of it and it's not doing what he's done in the past. Well, I think and it's an event, but it's an event where you leave and you're not sure what that event was, <laughs> was right? Like, event. you were like, wait, the ox card cord got passed. Like, that what part, just happened? It was very me. confusing. It blew me. I was done after that. I was yeah. like, yo, I hear the actual... It felt like I was in the car with the homies right. and we was just playing, you know what I mean, playlists. It was It was definitely crazy. What um? What are your favorite? What are some of you guys' favorite Kanye records? Favorite album? What's his best body of work? I love College Dropout and I think... Obviously, I was in college at the time, so I have a very personal connection. But, you know, when that came on, it just, it to me, it changed my life. And it just opened up this place in hip-hop for me that I just didn't know existed. Man. And it was one of those records, I remember my roommates, you know, neither of them liked rap, and they would listen to it. And we would just listen to it on fucking repeat all the time. So and I think you. there was, so you, you. you know, the biggest thing was, uh, taking the music aside, there was this vulnerability that I loved about him. Mm-hmm that a lot of rappers were afraid to have. You know, it's very much the braggado show or I'm better than you. And he was ready to 
be vulnerable and be mm-hmm. sad and be human. And I think, you know, to us nowadays, that's normal. You know, you listen to Drake or Future. Right. It's very normal for Again, people to show weakness. Door, but he opened right, that door. And when so he first things. came out, I remember people made fun of the way he dressed. They questioned his sexuality. You know, he's not masculine enough. But, you know, for people like me, I just really resonated to it. And from then, it was like he was the underdog and we wanted him to win. So to me, definitely college dropout. It's his magnum opus. It's his best album. Um, and to me, it's always going to be number one. Um, my my favorite album, this is Mr. C. My favorite album is Graduation. And probably one of my all-time favorite Kanye West songs is Big Brother. I mean, Great song. That's, Great that, that song is just, oh, my God. Like from the time Have you ever just... shed a tear, Mr. C? Because I have listened to that song. That I mean, song I, I, is I, I emo. Ain't, I ain't going to take, take it that far. But, but, I've shed a few tears but when, that song. When this comes on, stadium, stadium status. So good. Yeah. This you is get a, you get chills. And, you get chill. and for him, and for him to pay homage and give respect, you know, to, to 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 you know, one of the guys that put him on, it's uh, it's a great tribute. Um, it's right. a great tribute song to, to you know. I, I just and you can has, relate to the story. You can relate to his position in Rockefeller. Right. You know what he said. You know, Carlene Biddy was said more I could like buy a, two tickets. Right. right. We have all Biddy been there. Was there. <laughs> dunk we have all I was been the there. finger roll. Uh, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you look at. The pecking order in the Rockefeller yeah. and Def Jam system, and Kanye was definitely at the bottom of the totem pole. Sure. You know, everybody was a bigger artist. Everybody was somebody that people felt to be more credible. And here he come with the polos with two collars he never felt flipped that up. Way. He was number one no. always to be it yeah. begin with. He, right. al- he always felt that way about himself, but he had to make everybody else believe it. And you know oh, what's yeah. dope is like to your point, C. Like he's paying homage to someone who is his friend. Like it's one thing for people to pay homage to someone who's passed or you know Tupac. like yeah, Tupac, Tupac right, Biggie, yeah, yeah my, you know now MJ. Like all rest in peace. But to a grown man saying to another grown man like yo. I love you. You are my idol. I just want to make you proud. I want to be like you. That is some real vulnerable emo shit. And but if you know, anybody's vulnerable, it's that too. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Showing if anybody's shown a vulnerable side and hip yeah. hop and all that, I think Kanye's definitely been good at that. Yeah, and I thought that was so that was great because it was more than you know it was this universal feeling that we've all kind of felt. You know, everyone's looked up to someone, and sometimes you can't say those things. But I think he has that line about you know give someone roses when they can still smell them, and you know you play those beginning bars you get chills because we all can kind of empathize with it to some level An- think- another record that sticks out to me that i don't even think people really give him credit for as far as taking that risk is through the wire because right. sure because of the situation oh, with the car yeah. accident and yeah. him to do those vocals when he still had fucking wires yeah. in his mouth yeah. like yeah. Let, what, what if that record didn't what what if, what if that record wasn't successful right. I mean I don't even know if the rest of his career would he even followed if it wasn't for him taking that risk of mm-hmm. saying you know what I'm gonna do this record with the wires in my mouth and I'm just gonna let it I'm gonna push out my pain through these vocals and I, I think if it wasn't for that record I mean, I don't think anything else would even proceed it. He didn't. After he, that. Didn't, he didn't. He didn't fathom that. You know, Kanye. You know, a part of the reason why he's such a big winner is that he doesn't even fathom the losses. He doesn't take into account. Like I actually did an interview with him when he was in the when he was in the uh, car accident in the hospital from the car accident, and his mouth was wired shut. And uh, he rapped that song to me mm. over the phone, and he, you know he was telling me that was coming out, and you know it was a you know he's rapping a song that's gonna be his first single, and then he's talking about pancakes, and then he's talking <laughs> about the doctors, and he's talking about they said he was in the wrong type of vehicle, and he because you know his mind is all, always wondering, but he never is thinking about he's thinking about everything else except taking that loss. You know, mm-hmm. he's so passionate. He's one of those guys that's yes. so passionate that he almost wills his success he because does. you got to believe it. You know, but I never met early on. We had when we first met him way a hundred years ago. I remember, you know, with the just blaze era and the sped up soul samples and the da da da. I never remember anybody being as confident as he was about being a star. Yeah. And I'm gonna yeah. be a star one day, you know? You're gonna like my music. You know right. there was no one's ever to my recollection spoken so assured that they were gonna be special one day. And if you don't like me, I can tell you to your face you don't like me, but you're still gonna you know, you're still gonna listen to my music. And then when his first album came out he came up to our office just to ask us all what we thought about it. I mean, no one ever came up to us to say, so what do you think about my album? Blah, blah, blah. Every <laughs> editor, go up to speak at every one of them. And, well, I know you didn't really like my music here, but you're going to like it. Right. You know, we've never had anybody be 
confident to that point. Was it fake? Was it real? Was it ever? Was it a show? But the the confidence from the very, very entry level of Kanye was like nothing. Yeah, yeah, I think absolutely. the bravado He's back then, the tracks different. always justified it, right? Because yeah. I think a lot of artists, especially nowadays, have this bravado of, oh, I'm the best. I'm the greatest of all time. But Kanye had hit after hit, whether it's deep cuts, whether it was singles. He had something to prove that he wasn't just kind of blowing hot air. And I think at that point, you have to believe him. Yeah. I think it gets harder when it's like, wait, so what was the last Kanye radio hit? That's we have to all thought, have to sort of pause and think, I don't remember. That's why I thought 808s was so ballsy. There was mm-hmm. some stuff there that you could give away and take, and we talked about it and get rid of and not. But it thought that it was like I'm at this height of my career, and I'm going to give you something so left field, and you're either going to take it or leave it. Um, but if anybody's going to give it to you, it's me. Sure. And people dug it, and like we said, that opened up the draw, the doors for up, right? yeah. the Drakes, and I mean even now because Drake opened up the door for the Bryson Tillers of sure. the world. So mm-hmm. you know it all comes from that that Kanye school and that lineage. One thing, so, I, one thing, one thing I always think about. When it comes down to Kanye, is how would he be if his mother was still alive? That's, mm. that's, the, that's the main question that's, of all of it, and it's an, it's an area you can't really go into so much. Because he, right. when, like, when, when his mother passed away, he started blacking out, like oh, really totally. going. I think that was yeah. I mean, I think yeah. anybody can kind of look at that as a moment in time where things change, where Kanye changed, where some of his outbursts changed, where sure. some of the music changed, that like moment everything. That me still that what that we're saying of how everything happened, and I, I feel we are talking about it because it's such a, an issue, you know, but. That how that did not change the character of who he was to such an extreme, you know, level. And then we only saw how much he was actually dealing with it. We know he was blacking out and stuff, but that's the key, the crux to all of it, I think, of you know, of the character we have today. Right, because if, if if nobody didn't, if nobody, if there was not anybody on this planet that had his back, she was the one person right. that really, sure. you right. know, of mm-hmm. course, because that's his mom. And but he was so vocal about it, right? You know, so and for the him politics to deal of with what that. actually happened, right? So right. Everything how, about how it, you can't even. I, I always say you can't make the stuff up. Yeah, you know that expression. To me, with the Kanye thing, you for that character to be just, you know, his mother's child, and to be so out there and always know as an only child, you know, she would always be there for him. It was just a, uh, it it, we'll never know how much it changed him. Yeah. We'll never know how much it changed him. And not to say that it, you know, better or worse or whatever, just the being of Kanye. And then on top of that, dealing with celebrity, dealing with falling in right. love. I thought the big thing about Isis was that this guy was having a child at that point. So he sure. would change. And that we'd have this guy who now is a father. And I don't know, but maybe being a father would change him. Well, he didn't have the baby till after Isis. So I, when I heard Isis, I was like, <sighs> okay, well, maybe when the baby comes, he's going to change. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this album's going to be really, really, like, blow you away amazing. Because right. having a child's going to just change this person to such a degree. But two kids in, I'm not really sure right. if I got what I thought he's, was going to happen he, on this project. But still. And I think life experiences, they affect everyone differently, right? I mean, Without you know, so I think... I wouldn't even want to project sort of what he, how he should act when his mom passes or, you know, being in love or having children. One thing, though, that always kind of is a little bit of craw on my side is when people sort of blame the Kardashians. It's this idea that, oh, Kim has ruined him. The Kardashians have ruined him. And if anything, I think they're a match made in heaven because they're both very much the type of people who love attention and they know how to drum it up. They know how to get people talking and they genuinely enjoy it. And I think Kim has been just as helpful for his credibility in certain areas that are important to him as he has for her. So well, they're also playing the game together. Absolutely. I mean, her of the night of the moving the money over to the checking account. Absolutely. Sweetie's not broke anymore. You know what I mean? Right. They're playing this game together. And totally. And they both are experts. They're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. But also, to just to back it up, I think that something that we don't take seriously with rappers a lot of times is that they're human beings and they yeah. go through things. Right. And you know, Cameron disappeared for a year, and we all thought, like, where'd Cam go? Well, his mom had strokes, you know? Sure. Like, you know, where we hear other things, and you're like, well, something happened with your brother. And I think we sometimes forget how, you know, and, and maybe we do in a day-to-day when we know them, but mm. in the bigger picture, the hip-hop fan doesn't really keep in mind, this is a human being, and when something happens, they're just as fucked up as you're going to be over that. Absolutely. And I think that's a very, maybe in celebrity, but definitely with hip-hop, we skip right over yeah, what you're going yeah. through, you know. It's tough to it's tough to live life in the public eye. Yeah. You know, um, of course, this is what you signed up for. You want to be a celebrity, you <laughs> right. gotta take all that comes with it. But right. you know, there there are definitely moments like losing your mom. You know, is, is definitely everybody's gonna deal with that in a different way. Um, to just to lighten the mood a little bit, shout. Talk to me about your favorite Kanye albums or your dopest songs. You know, it's so crazy because I'm I'm looking at my list right now and one. 
the first four, one through four, are so close. Like you could you could really change the order one through four, and you know you could have a debate about all of them. Like his first four albums, I think any one of them could be his, his best. But I'm gonna go with graduation as well, man. I I think graduation was so appropriate because I think it changed it it graduated Kanye from like being one of the dopest in music to that super elite status mm-hmm. <clears throat> i think when he, when he put that album out I, I was at mtv and uh we had started doing hottest mcs at that time and you know kanye was pretty high up on the list graduation you know he, he actually he actually uh rapped about it um on uh Barry Bonds, when he says top five MCs, you ain't got to remind me. He was, he was definitely talking about the hottest MCs list that we was doing, and I remember seeing him in uh, the infamous night where Lil Wayne got arrested at the Beacon Theater. Kanye came out as a guest, and he did that. Can't tell me nothing record, mm. and the building was shaking so crazy, and you know up to that point. You know, Kanye was loved in the hood, but he didn't really have that that really hood banger. Like, okay, you know, like if the if the tunnel was open back in the days, he right. could have took that to or speed, or speed, or speed. See. man, <laughs> speed was something different. Mr. So, yeah, had speed some was, moments. We had but, some moments. <laughs> but 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 what you just mentioned about him not having the that 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 hood acceptance, the one thing that helped Kanye during that graduation period was him going back and forth with Fifty Cent. You remember they was going back Absolutely. and forth. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, they had that whole who's going to sell the most records, who's going to do the best in the first week. You know, Kanye was the first person that really stood up to fifth and didn't back down from fifth. Whereas, huh? And And one. And one. And one. 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 You know, without having to do disc records or none of that type of stuff. It was just his music. Yeah, it was the music. And it was just them going face to face, head to head on some record sales shit. And he, you know, he he beat fifth. That might have I think that might have been the most. The most focus that we've probably ever seen um, Kanye just focused on making an incredible masterpiece. Actually, you know, not to name drop or anything like this, but Jay Z actually played me the graduation album because he was the president of Def Jam at the time, and you know, we played it a, a few weeks back. And you know, Jay was so proud of that album when I, when we was listening to it. it I've never seen Jay that happy for any of his own projects than when he was playing that uh, that Kanye album. Jay was supposed to be on that Barry Bonds record too. Oh wow! Yeah, that's the, crazy. The Java, the Java little insider thing. He was like, "Yeah, you know, I just wanted to let them live, though. You know, I, 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 <laughs> I, I had some for it. Uh, I had some for it. I wanted to let them live, but Jay was definitely supposed to be on the Barry Bonds record. But you know, just listen to that record, and um, sonically he changed because you know it wasn't just the, the soulful thing like right. if, if you that's listen to made the leap over stronger right. and you know well I, that's and that's the thing is you made such a good point he had like you know the Jeezy sample on Can't Tell Me Nothing but then he flips a Daft Punk sample and right. you know now we talk about EDM and every DJ wants to do EDM and it's like you know very much a Fuck thing EDM. Go ahead. You know, you everyone mean? but Mr. C <laughs> wants to do EDM he will be in Ibiza later this summer though um, that's a lot of money a lot of zeros in that Good EDM luck. life I'm just saying <laughs> you need a manager um, but no. I will say that you know on the same record to put Stronger out and for a lot of rap fans they didn't know who Daft Punk right. was and he had basically a song that you know he had like the street record but he had the number one pop you know billboard top 100 record too all in the same album and I think that was a cohesive package you know it was important because you get all the different audiences and Kanye was one of those artists that it was acceptable for him to do both of those type of records absolutely you know he was he was one of those guys who didn't kind of paint himself into a corner as to what you know like 50 cent was so street and so hard it was only but so much he could do whereas a guy like kanye had a lot more flexibility in what he could do musically um we talked about kanye west and the collaborators um you you talked about him being one of the dopest mcs and moving into that space how how where do we rank kanye because we know that he has collaborators or writers or, or whatever does that take him out of that conversation is he does he keep him there? Is it is it an asterisk like the lockout That's a great season? Great question. Like what? Collaborators, ghostwriters. Which, what do you mean exactly? Uh, well, people be writing this wrong. Right. Th- okay. This, I just this, wanted to hear you say that. There's been there's been rumors <laughs> that they're yes. you know um, from from the rhyme fest right. to the consequences to 
Pusha you know, T. Right, Pusha, sure. a, num- a number of guys. Travis Scott. Yeah, don't don't ask me about that one. Scratching my head. But, um, <laughs> you know, where, where, you know, where does that you know, play what's, Kanye what's, in that what's conversation? What's interesting is, you know, to me it felt like Kanye was, the, the albums, the music was better when he didn't have as many. Right. Collaborative. You like know twenty what I'm people, twenty writers on the song is ridiculous. So does each person write one word? Like how does that work? <laughs> you might get an ad lib. Do I get a comma? You get like an asterisk. Like how does Unless that work? Fucking up some comments. Right, then clearly. That's totally different. Totally. But yeah, it's, it's, I just want to know. I think from... there's too many chefs in the pot at that point. Like at that point, you are second guessing yourself because there's way too many people. But I think it was way better when Kanye was just it was just him and you know maybe rhyme fest was there in consequence like with, with, with too many people it's just making it a little bit too convoluted to me but it goes back to your question of if we know for all intents and purposes that he is relying on outside help can we put him on that list of right. mcs i i personally would say no i put him more on a list of like sort of icons or artists like this all encompassing but right. like as an actual rapidy rapper like I don't put him on you said rapidy rapper I know <laughs> That's little, the thing. Little That's the alliteration. Little, rapidly alliteration. Rapper. Yeah, you know, rapidly somebody rap. who raps like, versus... Who really raps. And write their yeah. own rhymes. Right. Yeah. So I mean, what, because the conversation is... You gotta you know, write your own rhymes. That's what I say. We saying Pac. We saying... You know, we saying all... We saying Big. We saying now. Nah, nah, we saying these sure. guys who, f- for as much as we know, all right. pen and write their own rhymes. So for you to be included in this conversation, I feel like the, the prerequisite is that you have to write your own rhymes. I agree. And, I agree and, with and that. we have guys who are, who are ghostwriting. You know, the same conversation is... Is what took Drake out of that. I took Drake out of that conversation. Absolutely. It's the same, you know, the ghostwriting thing. See, you, you. I mean, you, you know what it is. See, how you feel about the ghostwriting and, and does that? Does I that mean, put... I think, I think, you know, <clears throat> I, you know, it's, it's a, you know, some people may respect it, some people may reject it, but you know, you have to just really keep in mind that even though we as hip hop purists may look at people like Kanye or Drake as a rapper. They also are entertainers too, as well. Sure. So, right. um, you know, uh, th- this has been going on since, since you know, as far as I can remember with hip hop, where rappers have had ghost writers write for them. You sure. know what I mean, or whatever the case is. We don't, you know, we don't condemn Diddy because we we know he's always had writers for him. You know, even though we, we don't look at well, hold on, and we, and we don't look at Liddy, we don't look okay. at Diddy's a legitimate rapidy rapper. But he also <laughs> says, "I don't write rhymes, I write checks." Right, and right. whoever wrote that line. A plus for that, right? A plus. You know, yeah. you know. So, but I, I mean, I don't really, I don't condemn Kanye or Drake if they have people writing for them, or if they, if they have songwriters or somebody that submit um, s- uh, a song that's already structured. I really don't condemn them from that. I, I, I think we're in a different era in time in hip hop where uh, the immediate public don't really give a fuck. They really don't care. They no, they don't. don't. They don't. What they, is they, it not. for you? Does does it can, can he stay in the conversation of the best Absolutely MCs? not. Okay. Absolutely not. And, and, and if you don't write your rhymes, I can't put you you can't be in my top 5 top 10 if you ain't writing your own rhymes. Absolutely. You, I agree. Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, I, I think if, if Kanye even if it came down insurmountable evidence that he was writing his own rhymes, I, I don't think he's in the top 5 yet. No. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. So you saying if you saying technically if Even Kanye if was, wrote right. all these rhymes to all these albums, you still wouldn't put them in the top five? No, I don't think I could, man. I, you I, would? I still, I still got. Beer. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, just yeah. making sure. You know what I hate? I hate because because top five dead or alive rhymes. Everybody says five. I hate the fact that you want to limit it to five MCs or five people because well, of how much you can count in one hand. Then it that's, gets complicated. That's ridiculous. We got an extra finger though. Even ten though, right? Even ten. If we're talking just the rhymes that we've heard, we're not. I'm not going to put him in a top ten of all time as a rapper. Mm. Come on now. What about Come top ten in this current era? Sure, absolutely. But we're even about even artists. even if he didn't write his own we're rhymes about as an in, his, in this current no, era. No, 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 no. Not top ten artists, not top ten rapper. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Once you once you don't write all your rhymes, you out of the rap category. Totally. You definitely just out his of that catalog conversation. Catalog is incredible. Catalog is amazing. As I'm looking at it, I'm just thinking, you know, smile like you. When College Dropout came out, I remember that. In my own world, because in my hood, everybody wasn't listening to Kanye West. I grew up in Coney Island. See, I was popping. Nobody was listening see to Kanye West, that. right? So I'm thinking that everybody is like my neighborhood. Nobody's listening. He had a show at SOBs. I remember this clear as day. So and I loud. think I'm a I think I'm gonna waltz up to SOBs. 
pay or maybe even talk my way in to get in to see this Kanye West show that nobody else knows about. Right. And then I get there and this line is rammed down the block. And I ended up listening to that concert outside through the glass nice. because that's how much I love Kanye West at that time. He was the first artist I bought merch from. Like I went online and found the Kanye West t-shirt with the bear. His merch and was awesome. And I bought awesome. the merch. Like I was so, so invested in the Kanye West thing at that point. So, you know, college dropout for me, amazing. Late registration, amazing. Graduation. I wish he would have went good ass job after that. Sure. That was that was the first album title change and you know that it's kind of deviate from the plan. But just, you know, 808s, like I said, I love that. Twisted Fantasy. Just crazy. Like, his catalog is amazing. And every time he did something to push the envelope to reinvent what we thought Kanye West was and to take it a step further. I, I mean, I have a question. Because I think in the beginning, you know, one thing that drew a lot of people, I think people like us, is we really liked him as a person. And you mentioned the merch. And, you know, for a while he had a Tumblr, like a blog. We used to all go there to look at pictures of very expensive Swedish chairs, you know, just because <laughs> we wanted to live in this world. And I think a lot of his fans, they buy his shoes, they buy his clothes, you know, or want to, you know, with their parents' allowance. But do you feel now in 2016, is he as likable? Is he as relatable? Are we still rooting for him? I'm still rooting for him, but you, you know what's you know what's interesting is that it's two different eras because when we first met Kanye, we we met him in a very very personable era. Like sure. I remember having dinner at TGI Fridays with Kanye. He would you know he okay would that's because you live a wavy <laughs> life. No, listen, 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 listen. The rest of us no, did not, not get to not do that. No, not just me. Not just me. He he would like Vanessa was saying. He would come up to every office in the press like the one of the reasons why he blew up and he was such a uh, a media darling to start off with is because he did like a presidential campaign literally for, mm -hmm. for a couple of years he would come up to every single office every single journalist shake hands talk debate give out his number give out his his uh two-way pager sure. you know it, it it was just a very it was just a very different thing now we're coming up in the era where he doesn't do press right you know he doesn't do the big interviews anymore apparently now he doesn't do white press per twitter oh Did you guys no, see no that he said press? white press should not talk about his music but funny he only tends to do fashion magazines right. so wasn't that's he little... just on ellen yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe she's just uh, mixed or something. I don't know. It's, it's, it's different. So it's kind of like when you know when I see Kanye now and, and doing different things like that. It's it's sort of like we just like that's Kanye being Kanye. You see, know? I just feel like he's not relatable on any level. Like even someone like a Jay Z, who obviously makes more money than I will probably ever see in my lifetime and lives this crazy life. For whatever reason, I feel like he's approachable. Like, I just feel like there's some something I can empathize with. And I feel that way about, you know, guys like Drake, Kendrick, right. obviously J. Cole. Right. Yeah, some sort of like a human connection. I think with Ye, at least for me personally, I feel like that's been waning. This kind of idea that he really is putting himself on a pedestal and keeping the peasants at bay. And this could be, you know, even the way he prices his fashion line or, you know, to get into a show to see his MSG fashion show, it's like $145. Like, I think he kind of forgot the proletariat, so to speak. And this is a guy that's $53 million in debt. He's, yeah, he's but trying then he's, to get the money right. out. But I then he's going on he, Twitter and kind of wants us to, like, feel bad for right, him. So right. it's weird. It's like this tenuous place. He understands place, that, though, because that's know? why you get a I miss the old Kanye. That's yeah. why you can get a verse out of him like that, because he understands that there's probably a disconnect between him and the people that, that, that loved him at one point. Right. And I don't think you have to, like, regress, right? I think as a person and as an artist, you should move forward. But I don't think you also need to be sort of overtly distancing yourself. Because I think the minute... Because even someone like, a, you know, Kim Kardashian, through her selfies and through her blog, she does try to, like, get you to empathize. Because why? She wants you to buy the many things that she's selling. Right. And I think with Ye, for whatever reason, it just feels like he's on another planet. And his references, you know, the people he's shouting out on Twitter... You know, he's, like, asking, like, Larry Page of Google and Mark Zuckerberg to call him. You know, 99.999% .999 of the population doesn't give a fuck. And it's, like, it's literally not 1% problem. It's it's 0.01%. Right, right, right. And, you know, at the end of the day, as your fans, we want to buy into you. Like, we want to buy your merch. We want to support you. But it's really hard to when you kind of alienate us. You know what? And, I, and that's a perfect segue into 
what we want from Kanye West with this new album looming, pending, being worked on, Topo Graphic 16, which we're sure the title is going to change. In a perfect world, what does that album feel like and sound like to you, C? I mean, <clears throat> I just I want him to just continue to be, you know, I, I, I like that he pushes the envelope. I want him to continue to push the envelope. Whether people agree with what he say or what he do or what he rap about or whatever, I want him to continue to do that because there's not really that many of these type of guys around. Um, you take away Kanye West, man, we, you know, oh, man. You, you know, it's, 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 a different industry. it's a lot of ratchetness on there, different you know what I mean? You know, a lot of ratchet bullshit out there. So <laughs> I, it doesn't bother me that he continue to push the envelope and it doesn't bother me that he take risks. I, 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 I like Kanye the way that he is now. And I, I, I want him to continue to just be who he is, be real, be honest, be yourself. Just, you know, whether nobody gives a fuck or only you give a fuck or if everybody give a fuck, just be yourself. I want to care, and I just feel like with this last album, it was really hard to care. From the rollout to just sort of his, like, the antics, it was just really hard to give a fuck. And a I, more traditional rollout will, will work for you? Or just a rollout that, as a fan, I could, like, get your not music. A, not a without, out. Well, yeah, without sort of having to resort to, you know, BitTorrent or, like, Pirate Bay or something. So you didn't you know? sign up for the 30-day trial of title, is what you're telling You us. know what's funny? They gave me a code, and it didn't work. So I think we need to talk to someone in IT, because I did try. <laughs> I did try with title. Someone I get Tata on the phone. Um, like to, someone like get like someone title, on though, the phone. I to be honest with you, not the... Sure, I mean, all about Spotify. Nah, I, mean, I, I pay for Spotify. I like Spotify, so, too. You know. I, pay, I pay for both. But I think that's the thing. I just really want... I just want to care again, and I think that means sonically I want to hear something new because I know he has it in him. He's one of the few people who I do believe is a visionary. He can see things and hear things that other people can't. I want him to do some shit that's going to make all of these guys you know, that we're shaking our heads at push their game up, you know, because Kanye can do that. He'll make Drake drop a better record. He'll make, you know, push a drop a stronger record. He pushes people around him. And I think it makes us, you know, better as hip hop. So yeah. he has that power and he also has a platform. And, you know, I understand not every artist wants to be political, but, you know, we're in the middle of an election and I would have loved to see Kanye say something beyond taking selfies with Hillary Clinton. Again, maybe that's just me because in my get heart that of hearts. Kanye 2020. Is, yeah. He's I, for yeah, he, he said he's going to run for he's president in 2020. What so. more do you want? He's running for office. I mean, he's 53 million in debt, so <laughs> there better be a lot of super PACs helping him out. Um, but that's it. To me, I just, I really want him to move the needle and I know he has it in him. Absolutely. Sha, new album from Kanye West. What you looking for? Um, I definitely want him to produce more of it just by himself. You know, I'm I'm, I'm missing Kanye as a producer. I, I wouldn't be mad to hear one or two soul samples, you know, a la back in the days, you know, call me nostalgic. And, you know, just, just provocative lyrically, you know. Like, I, I don't care if he's offending people. I don't care if he's... I just want to, you know, just hear more, like... What it is for like to him to have a son now, you know, and also raise his daughter as as he's getting older, and you know what he really thinks of some of these other MCs kind of coming for his spot, you know, just really really provocative lyrics. And can he no take doubt. us to TGI Fridays? Because it's not fair that only <laughs> Shaheem, new, yeah, new music. that would be great. Well, we'll listen, we all got our wish list. list. Kanye West, I'm sure this will get to you somehow, some way. <laughs> I want to thank you, Shaheen, for being here, man. Definitely appreciate thank you, you coming through. Let the people know where they can find you real quick. Um, you can find me, my name, really everything, at Shaheen Reed. You know, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, at Shaheen Reed, everything. Definitely, definitely. Smiley, what about you? Uh, so me a K. So check me out and the new Double uh, XL cover coming soon. Crazy, crazy. See? <clears throat> at DJ Mr. C, Twitter, Instagram, and um, Smiley's going to be my manager. <laughs> Only no if we doubt. go to Mita and do EDM music. And get these EDM checks. Of course, you know where we at, man. DoubleXLMag.com. I am Torre at Torre on that Twitter and that gram. Of course, you can catch me on SiriusXM as well. On behalf of myself, Vanessa, who stepped out to go handle some big dog business. We appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. We'll be right back with it. The great hip-hop debates. Double XL. You know how we do it.